Yeah. Yeah. So, so you could say that what you call the knee-jerk reaction of uh, of the administration then was was um, kind of superfluous. Um, nevertheless, since then, uh, the, the picture, uh, as far as as far as we know, uh, watching watching it uh, uh, as good as we can from the West, the picture is is that uh, repression only uh, only worsened since then. There has been. Uh, a law on a foreign agency which which uh, damages uh, civil society because every organization that gets some funds from abroad has to register as a foreign agent you were expelled from uh, from the human rights council what what was it like in this human rights council and why did you why did you enter it that's a sideline for a minute did you have trust in that system uh, well, uh, a small uh, a small note uh, aside, uh, legislation on NGOs, foreign agents have been in action since 2014. Oh, okay, uh, and, sorry. And um... I, th there are always embellishments. Uh, almost every session of the Duma, we do have some fine tuning of this already brilliant mm -hmm. uh, legislation. So you're not completely wrong, but still I must say that it's no new thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that me being expelled from the Human Rights Council is not that great a loss for Russian civic society. It can survive that, frankly. <laughs> so can I. Uh, it, answering your answering your question, uh, I was invited uh, into this council by the then chair of the council, Mikhail Fedotov, uh, a person I know and respect. And at the moment when he invited me, it was in December uh, 2018. Um, the composition of the council has been very different from the list that you would see if you uh, access the site, uh, presidentcouncil.ru, uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, Lyudmila Alexeyeva uh, was then the member. Uh, other much respected uh, figures from the Russian civic society, uh, heads of NGOs who have been working in this field for decades were members. So it was, there were other people as well, but generally it was a list that one would be honored to uh, be present in. Mm -hmm. So I agreed. Uh, I read uh, all the uh, all the documents related to the legal documents related to the council. So I knew that it's a consulting body without administrative powers, any administrative powers whatsoever. It's an unpaid job. You don't get a position in the presidential administration. You don't get anything, even even a, a email address. You use your own email address and you just have a list of other members and you can communicate with them. That's all. Uh, so I knew that there was not much uh, that could be done with this membership, except one thing, uh, except making, again, visible and making public those issues that do not get enough public attention. That was the single resource that we possessed and we used it to the hilt, I would say. It can be affirmed that we, and, and saying we, uh, I'm saying about those uh, members uh, of the council, uh, NGO workers, lawyers who were expelled with me. And there was, uh, I think a few weeks ago, uh, there was another wave of what is called uh, rotation. Now in the council, other people were expelled as well. Uh, for example, Tamara Vashikova, uh, mm -hmm. an ex member of Russian constitutional um, court, one of the most respected lawyers in Russia. Uh, Yuri Kastanov, one of the oldest lawyers lawyers uh, in the country. So uh, it can be affirmed that together we have sort of destroyed this body. Yeah. Uh, they had to uh, arrange a, a purge and you see they didn't even manage to do it in one in one step. So it took two years uh, to, to completely uh, purify uh, the, the uh, council and they had to change the chair as well. Yeah. So yeah. The question, the question, was it worth it, uh, is a good question. Both, uh, was it worth it for me to to spend ten months now of my life in this uh, in this capacity, and was it worth, was it worth it to act like we acted in perhaps knowing or suspecting that uh, it will result in the virtual dismantling of yeah. this body? At this point, I would say yes. I think it was.